Hello, everyone. I'm Nikki from the Technical Department of Singapore Office. This time, I will introduce the sensor functions in civil engineering. We will focus on the frequently asked questions and the function usage. It will be from five parts, including information check and setting, quest dynamic survey, tilt survey, static and PPK, and stake out. Okay, let's start from the first part, information check and setting. Users often need to check the receiver information in daily use or when technical problems occur. Many include firmware version, model information, and uh, service information, and sometimes also need the log files. From this video on the right, we can see how to check this information. First, in the device connection page, you can find the receiver firmware version. But for the motherboard firmware, you need to click the serial number. You must click the serial number continuously to make the father motherboard firmware to appear. And the antenna information can also be checked in this page too. Second, in the additional settings, the model information can be checked. You can see the radio and the network model type here, and the receiver settings. You can also do some basic settings, including the receiver voice volume. Here, you can do some receiver settings. And also, the satellite tracking constellation can be switched. In the service information page, you can check if your receiver functions are opened, like the NFC and tilt sway. Third, some technical issues will require a log file, which can be found in the controller, file manager, internal storage, setup, log folder. So if sometimes you need to copy the sensor log, you can find it here. For the details way, users can switch the graph and the test wheel by the button on the upper left corner as below to meet the daily server requirements. And here, you can see the different, different buttons on the details way page. Users sometimes will forget the meaning of the button. At this time, as long as you press and hold the corresponding button, the software will display the function de descriptions. And these buttons can be added, sorted, or received in the configure display to display settings. You can choose the model and the toolbar to modify them. Furthermore, some users prefer to use the physical buttons of the SHC, uh, SHC30 controller. The sensor supports it. Here you can see the menu button can be used to display commonly used functions menu. And the, the key, the number case 128 can be used in details away as default shortcut button. In addition, the number case 129 can also be set as a shortcut key for the quick code point connection. 
Code means that you can add a description to the collective points and change the shape and the color of the points. The shortcut content of the physical number buttons can be changed to quick code in the configure data physical shortcut option. And here, then you click the um, code code in the upper left corner on the detail survey page. And now press the corresponding number. You can customize the shortcut code of the setting button and use it, use it to collect points. Okay, next part, we will introduce the quest dynamic survey function. The reason why quest dynamic survey is used is that users sometimes will encounter the following problems in the heavily sheltered um, circumstance. The first one, there are fewer satellites, some noise and uh, uh, will be serious multipass interference. And uh, the GNSS signal is unstable. Second, no RTK fixed rate, more snake points, and the accuracy is unstable. Third, incorrect coordinates even in the RTK fixed data. So to solve these problems, we have developed the quest dynamic survey function. It's the algorithm to get more stable and reliable RTK fix solution in the hard shuttled circumstance, which combine actual short PPK result with the RTK result to do short post processing to reduce sleep points. Actually, it has no effect on the precision, but it will improve the overall accuracy. We can see the picture on the right. If accuracy is very low, it means that the points deviate far from the core correct value. This is called the sleep point. Quest dynamics away function removes these sleep points. And now the receiver models supporting these functions are SL900 and SL700. Mm, it can be opened in the additional settings, receiver settings, and there is a quest dynamic RTK option. It needs to ensure that the correction data has been um, always gated from the face or course more than 30 seconds before this function can be ready to use. After the function is turned on, the quest dynamic button will be displayed on the detail survey interface. You can click and start the collection it will promote the receiver need to keep stable during the measuring. And the whole process will take about 20 to 40 seconds to finish. Then the software will have a sound promote and pop up the save point interface. Okay, this is about the Quest dynamic survey, and you can give it a try after the webinar. Next part, we will talk about the tilt survey. In the field survey, users often will face, face some special situations which are hard to survey points. Please see the picture on the left. There are four common cases. The first one is that it's hard to night the receiver to be neverly. And the second one shows points need to be measured quickly 
but there is no time for enabling. The third one is in a quarter point, it's impossible to let the receiver be enabling. And the last picture shows that there is a point under obstacle. So that's why we need the tool survey. It means that when the receiver is tilted, it still can get the coordinate of the ground point. The tilt survey calculates the coordinates by combining the receiver face center coordinates. Tilt angle and the azimuth, pole height and the face center offset. The receiver models currently supporting this function are SL900 and the SL700. The SL900 is calculated by the receiver magnetic sensor. SL700 is calculated by the sensor tilt 2.0 software algorithm. So the method of the SL900 and the SL700 tilt survey are different. So um, let's first introduce the SL900 tilt survey function. Because the receiver has built-in sensors, so the SL900 must need to be calibrated before using the tilt survey function. You can see here, there are three types of the calibration, including the electronic bubble orientation sensor and the magnetic calibration. But it's not really necessary to do the calibration before each use. Only the following situations need to be calibrated. First, if you use a new receiver first time to use a tilt survey, you must do the calibration. Second, change to a new survey error and the circumstance changes greatly. Third, calibration expired. It's usually only be 30 days. And the following precautions are usually required during the calibration. First, the calibration should be done in a no magnetic interference and open air circumstance. The receiver should be in external working mode because uh, internal UHF or internal GSM mode will have the magnetic interference itself. And third, don't take out the battery or power off the receiver during the whole calibration. So let's briefly talk about how to do the calibration. First, um, is the electronic bubble calibration. The user needs to keep the receiver level and uh, stable, and then click start in the set serves additional settings electronic bubble calibration option. Then the receiver will automatically complete the calibration and the software will promote the success. Second is the orientation sensor calibration. Click start in the additional settings orientation sensor calibration option. You can find it here. And the software will pro promote the calibration steps. And there will be a picture to show how to do the calibrate. In fact, the calibration process of the orientation sensor calibration can be divided into two parts. First, as shown in the picture A below, users need to rotate the receiver at a constant speed and make one circle in about seven seconds. Second, as shown in the picture B below, 
you take rotate the receiver 45 degrees clockwise and then repeat the rotation of picture A again. A total of about eight times need to be repeated to ensure that each direction is calibrated to finish it. The third calibration to be done is the magnetic calibration. Still need to keep the receiver level and stable. Then click start in additional settings magnetic calibration option. Rotate the receiver clockwise at a speed of no more than 20 degrees per second. And the software will promote that the calibration is success. After completing the above calibration, the tilt survey function can be used. It needs to be opened on the data page in the configure option of the detail survey page. Users can choose normal slope or the corner slope mode. The formal one is simpler and the natural one is more precise. The first one is the normal slope mode. After the option is turned on, keep the receiver tilted and still. Click the store point button on the detail survey page to click the point and it will be okay. Save point interface will show the tilt angle and azimuth. The second one is the corner snow mode. If the user use the tilt survey in this mode, you need to keep the receiver tilted and uh, still in two different directions. And then connect the point separately. During this process, the software will promote four steps. And this is about the tilt survey of the SL900. The accuracy can reach about three to four centimeters. The next one is the tilt survey function of SL700. 700 doesn't have the tilt sensor, so there is no calibration is required. It's a software algorithm that combines the pole height, phase center offset, and the 5 hits real-time receiver phase interposition to calculate the coordinate. The users also need to open the option in the configure data snow method 2.0. And then click the store point button to click to click the point. The software will promote the picture to show how to do the collection. And you need to keep the receiver tilted and shake the pole around the center to make the progress bar reach to the 100%. It usually will take about 15 seconds to finish it. And this is about the tilt survey of SL700. The accuracy can reach about five centimeters. When connecting with SL700 tilts away 2.0 function, the following two methods are recommended. The first one is when you in the open circumstance, it suggests that tilt about 15 degrees and shift into a big circle. But if you are in a sheltered circumstance, it is suggested that to tilt about 45 degrees with a small circle so that the receiver can face more sky errors to get more sadness and the better accuracy. 
the above is the introduction about tilt the wave. And now there is a questionnaire about the quest dynamic and tilt the wave. Please help fill it out. Will you often use Quest Dynamic Survey and Tilt Survey in your daily work? A. Both Quest Dynamic Survey and Tilt Survey are often used. B. Tilt Survey is often used, but the Quest Dynamic Survey is rarely used. C. Quest Dynamic Survey is often used, but Tilt Survey is rarely used. D. Quest Dynamic Survey and Tilt Survey are also both of them are rarely used. Okay, let's continue. The next part is the part of static and the PPK. First, static connection is a commonly used receiver mode. In the sensor static page, Users can start the work with static settings and do static data management. Setnap receivers usually store static data in the GNS format. It's a default option, but uh, some receivers can also store Renix format, format at the same time. This store Renix data option can be opened in additional settings receiver settings. And now the receiver models support the function are SL900, SL700, and SL600. In the static settings interface, set the duration option can be checked to set static collection duration in hours. After the setting, the receiver will stop collection at the specified time and automatically shut down. The receiver models now support this function are SL900 and the SL700. And please note that the state, the, the state duration can only be used when the static mode option is checked. In addition, it's also suggested to en enable the static mode option when doing some normal static collection. Because if you check the static mode option, it will save more battery power. In the static data management interface, users can view the existing data fails to download and delete or format. Now create a record and then you can operate it. When you try to download the static data, it will show the download path. And uh, um, after the successful download, it will show the download path and you can find it in the controller folders. Second, about the PPK. The coordinates of rover are calculated by doing the post-processing with the data collected by the base static data. And the receiver can do the temporary static collection 
at the same time with the RTK working. For now, for now, all the TetNap receivers are support this PPK function. In the details away page, you can click the PPK button to enter this function. Users can click turn on the record to start the receiver mode and the receiver will record the st static data automatically. Then click the start mark at a certain position to collect the point data. And the PPK collection record can be seen in the project PPK file after finishing the collection. The data and the mark information recorded by the rover PPK will be stored in the Renix folder of the receiver in the Renix format, which can be post processed in the SDS. At present, the sensor software only supports point by point collection, but not continuous collection of the PPK. Okay, the last part, let's talk about the stake out. Sensor supports three stake out mode including stake points, snake stake line, and elevation difference. Users can design the points line surfaces on the join and uh, use the survey devices to find them in the field. First, for the point stake out, the user can select it select an existing point in the point list or input coordinates manually to do it. And the stick out interface will display two different circles with the stick out point as a center. You can see the last picture here. The green one will indicate the distance range of the stick out pro mode and the red one indicates the range of stick out accuracy. They can be manually changed. And sometimes you will need to do the offset stick out. Then please check the offset stick option and input the horizontal distance and the azimuth to proceed. In addition, CSF also supports the AR stake out. If you click the AR button to enter this interface, you can do the stake out in the real sense. Another commonly used function is the CAD base mic. Users can import the DXF files into the sensor and the snack points in the base map in different ways to do the stake out. Many of our users will like to use the CAD DXF files to as a base map. And the direction of the stake out arrow can be fixed. If you open the fixed direction or open the controller direction in the display settings to avoid random change of the direction. Furthermore, stake out guide type can also be modified in the stake settings. Users can choose front bike or the north south. There are two different modes to guide the users to do the stake out. And they can choose the mode they like to adapt it to their stake out habits.
The next one is the state line. Sensor currently supports design and stake out lines. There are four different line types in the sensor. You can try to only stake out line or um, also the spiral curves and the circle. Users can click the stake line library button and design the line in these different ways. Then the corresponding lines can be selected to do the stake out. During the stake out process, users can also click sample point button to input the manage on point of the point to be staked and to find it, then could do the stake out work. The promote box below the software will display relevant information in the real time. Here you can see it will show your difference your location difference between your real time location and uh, the stake out. The last one is the elevation difference function. This function is used to calculate the elevation difference between the current point and the fitting point of the surface. So as to know how much artwork is cut or, or need to field in the surface. Users can click the surface library to use existing points to create the DTM surface and the preview. Then apply the DTM surface to stake out. When the location is in the surface, the promote bar before below here will display the elevation. And you can see you need to cut or fill. It will show the real time height and the design height in this DTM surface. Okay, so the above is the introduction about stake out. And now there is a questionnaire about the static and the PPK stake out. Please help fill it out. Will you often use static and PPK and the stake out in your daily work? A, both static and PPK and stake out are often used. B, static and PPK is often used, but stake out is rarely used. C, stake out is often used, but static and PPK is rarely used. D, static and PPK and stake out are rarely used. Okay, so thanks for your listening. This time the webinar is finished. If you have any questions, you can send the email to our email address as below. And the next is our Lucky Joe time. Please don't go away and the Lucky Joe will start soon. Thanks.